Hey, Andrew here at Shot 2020 with Chris from Drake Associates. Uh, what do you got for us? This looks very different. This is totally different. So this is called the Athena Rifle System. It's a chassis platform for the AR-15 and also the AR-10. It's a first of its kind. Typically people know uh, what they call traditional free flow rifles as having one of those tubes that we all we all know and have seen for the last yeah. forever. Yeah. You know, that's that's what and what we've done is taken our know-how from the projects that we've done on um, big big projects, uh, chassis rifles for Savage for the Stealth and Stealth Evolution rifles. Now we've applied that technology in a monolithic chassis for both the AR-15 and the AR-10 systems. Trying to squeeze about as much accuracy out of this gun as we can. And by removing that free flow tube, it's allowing you to bed this upper receiver into the chassis itself, just like a precision bolt gun. Okay. Well, we've seen, a, we've seen some huge accuracy gains um, by going to this platform. What happens is, once the, uh, once the rifle itself, the rifle upper is bedded into the, the chassis itself, nothing makes contact with the barrel nut, nothing makes contact with the barrel, nothing makes contact with the gas system. In fact, hang on a second, I'm just gonna slowly put this down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide down our fore end here. Let me just transfer this out real quick. This right here, I'm gonna slide this down, and I'll pull this down so you can actually see, flip it over, you can actually see the free float capabilities here where nothing makes contact with the barrel nut, the gas tube, the barrel. It's, it's truly itself free floated, unlike this system, where when you're putting pressure on the fore end, it translates to energy into the barrel nut and into the pin set. Okay. So we want to remove that out of the, out of the equation, that reactionary moment or reactionary force. Well, that also answers one of my first questions when I saw it is, how do you take this down? And with that off, obviously, the whole upper can lift out of Correct. It. The two pins will move out that way and the upper actually comes out of the top of the These top of the pins group. are pretty tight, so They're, I'm not gonna try it. No, 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 it, it's, it's a tight fit and we specifically yeah. did it because we, we know from the precision bolt guns we want a tight lockup, yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah, what I get did. It. that's what we did. Let me put that forend back into you real quick. Let me show you real fast how that works. So the forend will actually, I'll tr trade you real quick. Certainly. Yeah, no problem. So what happens here is the forend will actually come down over the top and it'll actually slide down comes like this, straight down, and will lock into place, okay? There is a pull at the bottom, which allows the release of the forend to slide forward. We did a couple of cool things. We actually put sand relief cuts in here to make sure that sand, debris, dirt, mud, anything, ice, it can not prohibit you from getting that, uh, that forend piece off. We call the forend, uh, we use the same term as sop mod, but we call it sop mod D for sop mod D for Drake. <laughs> um, real quick, while I'm just manipulating this one around while you have the other rifle, this is a uh, forend which has got a wider footprint at the bottom. We yeah. know that guys want to shoot off packs, want to shoot off rucks. You want to have more surf bags, bags, more surface engagement along the bottom of the, of, of the forend than just one of these skinny, narrow yeah. commercial tubes. Yeah, we all the uh, precision, uh, a lot of the precision bolt actions have a really flat bottom to their correct their, their forehands and, yeah. and you know what we want to do is make this a multi-discipline gun so whether a law enforcement team military team a um, hunter a competition shooter or just even an enthusiast wants to have a really uh, interesting gun platform to shoot from he's going to have that where he can shoot off the packs we recess the picatinny rail below basically below the waterline here so it doesn't snag i can tell you from career with law enforcement getting a uh, m4 out of a car at two o'clock in the morning everything gets snagged on all the picatinny rails yeah. Uh, we did a couple other things which are interesting while we manipulate this one around. <clears throat> we put a barricade stop way ahead of the magwell. And the reason why we do that <clears throat> is because obviously the curvature of the AR-15 AR-10 mag, we didn't want any contact with the barricade <clears throat> that you're shooting from. The other thing I see a lot is I see guys, when we did a lot of instruction with the police department, guys will grab a magazine. It's one of those things that drive me crazy. You know, not just to load it, but just while they're shooting it. Yeah. We want to put a relief cut ahead of the magazine because we want to keep that magazine being reliable. We don't want somebody to put undue pressure or force on that magazine. So if somebody goes to grab it, there's a relief cut where your finger will actually index into and keep your hand off that magazine. <clears throat> Just a couple other features. We did a very wide, I'll show this real quick. I'm trying to go slow so it goes nice and easy on the camera here. We did a very wide and generous relief for the mag for feeding of the, of the weapon yeah. platform itself. Um, the, this in the AR, uh, AR-15 configuration, we're showing this here just for display purposes with a, uh, this is a government contour barrel, it's not the barrel that we typically feature, the barrel that we feature is the heavy contour in there. 
The gun is, the gun is available with uh, three different barrels, one being a 16, one being an 18, which we think is the optimal barrel, and also with the 20 inch. I like um, an 18 inch barrel. 18 has been great, and I'll tell you, we'll talk about that in a second. So there's a couple also buttstock options. We choose to use the Fab Defense um, buttstock. It, it, this is a GL shock. We used it on the uh, Savage Stealth uh, in 338, where it just absolutely took a beating and held up. What we did with this is we have a wider cheek piece just for more cheek engagement, which is something that we something that we feel is a little more comfortable for the for the shooter. I'm going to hand this one back to you. I'll grab the other rifle real quick, and we'll talk about a little bit of the accuracy of the, of the platform. Okay. So. Here's the original, one of the original ones we've, we've actually done extensive testing on. This gun has well over 4,000 rounds on it. Um, when we wanted to go prove the concept out, we built out the upper receiver to our specification. Uh, we use a Saturn barrel. Steve Saturn makes some great stuff. Uh, we used, for the testing, we wanted to use the uh, Saturn's button cut on the Liberty Series barrel. The reason why we did that is, as you know, there's three types of barrels being made, hammer forged, button cut, and cut rifle. We wanted to go with uh, a match button, which is the middle, middle of the line. What we did was we were able to take this, this gun platform, this gun will shoot, it, it's a .6 MOA, .7 MOA gun all day long with, with really good ammunition. Um, what we've done is we want to take this upper receiver out and do a comparative test. We took the upper receiver out, we dropped it in a Colt uh, 6920 lower, we put our trigger group in there, our, the Hogue pistol grip and the buttstock. We shot it from a test sled with a commercial free flow tube. What we saw was about a minute and uh, about a minute and a minute and 1.4 MOA was actually the actual number we saw when we averaged out all the groups uh, with the best group yielding of a 0.7 MOA. We took that upper receiver out of that gun, took the free flow tube off, dropped it in the chassis, it cut the group size on this button cut barrel to a 0.7 MOA with the best groups showing in the 0.3s. We repeated the test as well with the other barrel from Saturn, which is their cut rifle barrel. That gun um, was a low, uh, low 0.6, it was between a 0.5 and 0.6 MOA and the best group seen on this barrel was a .18. So it's a very tight, tight shooting gun. Um, this gun, we did have the opportunity with the 18-inch barrel to run it out. We ran it out to 1,062 yards out of a 5.56. And on one of the military bases where we're hitting an E-type target downrange with multiple nice. hits. Yeah, and it was, what was cool about it was, it wasn't us shooting it, it was a, uh, one of the teams that were uh, you know, checking out the gun and, and actually doing it. So I made them take the photo of the target and send it <laughs> back, you know? Before we started rolling the cameras and all that, you were showing me some of the um, sheets from the testing and all that. Sure. Um, if you get a chance, send us the, the sure. PDFs or the, the links to that, and we'll do, we'll do our best to throw that up there because um, I'm sure these guys want to see that data, mm -hmm. but obviously you're not going to be able to <laughs> off the top of your head. You're right. a smart guy, but I would be shocked if you could remember every single yeah, one of and those groups. You know, sizes. we did. We, we wanted to make sure that all the data that we have was was done. We've used that um, the Ransom International Rest Test Sled. You know, we want to sh take the shooter out of the equation for some of the testing. We have done testing with shooter in as well. I mean, we spent the last six months, you know, running this, running all the tests on the, this platform. But at the end of the day, what we're seeing is a significant accuracy increase by going to a chassis platform. Uh, the development of the gun was about 24 months in development. Um, bunch of patent work later and uh, relying on a bunch of patents that we have, we really made this thing come to fruition and make it work. Um, just a few things real, real also interesting about this is we're checking out the um, Fab Defense uh, Wraps buttstock. It's something new that they're, that they're uh, come out with, with this year. Actually, we had one of the original ones that we, prototypes that we actually got a chance to play with. What I liked about it was a clean, no wheels. It was just a clean fit, yeah. something different. Um, if you also take a look here, displayed on this weapon is a Liberty's Defense uh, suppressor cover wrap. Um, I was looking at that. If you were here a couple of minutes ago, uh, Chris Hall from Liberty's Defense was here. They're uh, doing a lot of work with the special operations community. Um, the gun itself, and, and I meant to tell you, what we also found interesting about this, it's not a, uh, a $4,000 rifle that you'd expect. We're coming to market at an at a, at a introductory price, and on the, on the first tier of it is a 1776 price tag. For the complete rifle? For the complete rifle, in a chassis. Okay, matched. so when you said, um, yeah, it's not a $4,000 rifle and all that, because yeah, I was kind of expecting <laughs> it yeah. was going to go in that direction, yep. and $1,700 is really consistent with several other manufacturers that yep. make quality AR-15s. You know what, we, this, is, this is a precision gun, but what we learned from doing all that work with Savage, we saw where people were buying you know, on the Stealth and Stealth Evolutions in that 1200 to $2,300 mark, and we said, look, we don't want to make this a $4,000 gas gun you know, and, and, and limit the uh, 
re yeah. re limit the reach to people. We want to get this where a guy could get a high quality barrel, high quality trigger, in a chassis system and have the semi-automatic capability and let's keep it at a reasonable price. So with the entry, with the uh, first gun coming out at the 1776 price, it'll feature, the, say, the 18-inch barrel, the, the match trigger group. I mean, they can choose either the 16 or the 20 barrel, but and that's, that's really where it's coming. Um, the only changes on these guns as they go up in price is just changing the buttstock equipment on it. That's, that's pretty much it. And the colors. And the colors. The colors are olive drab, and we like the, uh, we have an olive drab color, which is here. We also have an anodized uh, flat dark earth. Uh, this awesome. is one of our first ones. We did it in a uh, dark burnt bronze, which was just a one-off for us, but it was just something cool. When can I buy one? These are going to market right now. So we're in the, in the middle of getting the production run moving forward as we are uh, moving forward for 2020. Um, they should be hitting the, uh, should be hitting the floor pretty soon. So we're uh, full swing here. So any day now? Any day now, let's go with that. <laughs> awesome. It's all good. If we want to know more, where, where should we go to learn more? So if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can contact us at drakeassociates.us. You can sign up for our, um, there's a newsletter that we have. You can sign up for it. You can shoot me an email, cdrake at drakeassociates.us. You can reach us on our business line at 631-749-1100, or even just go to our website, drakeassociates.us. And awesome. we're happy to take your calls. Any questions, shoot me an email. Um, and we're looking forward to maybe getting a test rifle over to your team. That would be fantastic. I would love to get my hands on one. Excellent. Thank you well, for thanks, your time. Guys. Thank you for everything, guys. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to be at a lot of other booths. Stay tuned. I love you.